all right so today i'm actually going to work on my little uh one and a half ton jacks that i've done the big wheel conversions on um you know some people would say well you need to get the uh, badland three ton off-road jack you know instead of building these little bitty ones but i mean i've got the badland three ton off-road jack and I still got a, a need for these little ones so there is a benefit i mean obviously that's a a really good jack there that um off-road jack so i mean you see it's you know it's well built it's big bulky uh should be pretty stout these little jacks here are you know easy to move around you can do 90 percent of what i need done um this uh, badland jack i'm ba basically just going to use it around here so i mean there's always a project something going on um and it's just going to be uh, basically a run around out here jack these smaller ones easier to haul move around uh take with me do stuff that i need to do versus lugging that around so um either way i'm sure i'll get plenty of use out of them i mean you can see i'm uh floor jack poor there's two over there by the load star these three here there's bottle jacks there's transmission jacks uh, i got all kinds of them but anyway today what i'm gonna be doing is um strengthening up the front axle on these two so i've had um a few comments and people telling me hey use a piece of uh uh like steel pipe from lowe's you know black iron pipe and some grade eight bolts so that's exactly what we're going to do today not sure if you can see it or not but the front axle on that one i've actually bent down and what i did what i did off camera is i actually filled that tube up around that uh all thread that threaded rod with uh epoxy or i guess the jb weld epoxy if that makes a difference and um steel bent so uh we're going to re replace those today and um yeah, I'm gonna cut us up some pipe, cut some uh, a grade eight bolts, and slap these things together and see how it does. So, kind of hard to tell on video, maybe, but as far as height on these jacks, I mean, which they're sitting in the gravels, the the Daytona and the Badland are almost the same height all the way down. That the Daytona is a little bit lower, which the spacer is adjustable on the Badland, and these aren't. You can swap them back. You know, I made them worry I can swap it out and lower them back down, but anyway, the the Pittsburgh is uh, a little bit lower, maybe. So, kind of got my choice here of uh, the height on the on the jacks here. So, anyway, let's uh, get these axles out and uh, get to welding. All right. So, first up on the chopping block is the Daytona one and a half ton. I'm going to uh, unbolt the front axle and I'll probably have to cut this uh, front axle here in the middle where I, like I say, I put epoxy in it trying to uh, make it a little more sturdy, but it didn't help. So let's get these wheels unbolted and cut this front axle out of here. So here's the pipe I bought. It is, we can read it on here, 3 8 by 12 inch black steel pipe nipple. And this one came from Lowe's. So what I'm gonna do is cut, basically cut it right here at the edge of the threads and I'll measure whatever length I need to go in between here, in between the frame. And then hopefully I can get two out of this. I believe I can, so. Um, We'll cut those, and I got some grade eight bolts we'll weld into that. But first, let's get this axle out of here. And you can see the epoxy is holding it in there pretty good. So let's cut this, see if we can't get that out of there. There we go. She's still attached pretty good, but let's see if we can't get her knocked loose. All 
know how well you can see that, but that actually is uh, epoxied in there. So yeah, didn't do nothing. So let's clean this up, get to measuring. I'm just gonna cut these threads off here on the end. Should be straight enough. So, you might be wondering, why are you using a hacksaw? Because it's basically just as fast as a cutoff wheel. Plus, get a little bit of exercise. So, win-win. So, this is going to be four and a half. And that's, that's square enough on the end for me. I don't really care. Let's mark this four and a half. And let's see how straight we can cut this just by eyeballing it. perfect but not horrible bad so I think the uh, um, the other jack is four and a half inches as well so I'm gonna go ahead and measure this but I'm gonna go measure the uh, other jack first just to make sure All right, so I went and measured the Pittsburgh and it is four and a half inches as well so we'll go ahead and mark this Four and a half. Close enough. on that one but I think it looks straighter than the other one so let's clean these up we'll sand the ends a little bit just to smooth them up and uh, we'll drill some holes in them for some tacks to hold the the grade 8 bolts in so yeah that should work good so I'm having trouble locating the, the bolts that I bought to put in the ends of this I want to say I bought like six inch grade eight that way. Hopefully we can sink them way in here. I'm not sure how far if they'll actually meet in the middle, but um, that's the plan. So let's uh, let's pause here for a second while I look for these uh, bolts to go in this thing. Okay, I'm back. I finally found them. Um, anyway, I bought I bought several different bolts uh, for this just to kind of see what was the my best option so uh i think these came from lowe's maybe tractor supply and then these were from uh, rural king so the longest they had in stock at um lowe's were these two and you can see if i cut the heads off of those they're not long enough so i mean they're not even long enough um but it together so if i swap out one of these which is even shorter no good so probably won't use them these way too short so, I mean, they would work if I spaced them out, you know, and, you know, the pipe would be in the middle, but I feel like I'd want that all filled in. So, if you go to these I got from Rural King, a little bit longer. So, if I cut the heads off, still just long enough. So, what I'll do is probably use these. I'm glad I bought four of them. So, we can... Uh, cut the heads off of those and I'll bevel in kind of tack these together um, hope it'll make it a little stronger and then grind it down to where it'll fit in this so the bolts fit in this pipe 
you know it's a nice snug fit and uh yeah i believe this is gonna be a lot stronger so um let's get to cutting the heads off of these bolts and probably not going to use the hacksaw for that too bad pretty square so let's um, probably bevel the edge a little bit so I can just throw a little bit of weld on them to hold them together if you look I mean that's probably not even an eighth of an inch on either and so maybe a quarter inch longer but yeah ain't worried about that be good Let's, um, let's bevel them and uh, weld it up. Okay, so I got all the edges beveled. So basically, gives me a spot to put a little bit of bead of weld there. And then I'll, you know, once it's together, I'll slip it all the way through this. So they'll be inside of that. Should make the front axle a whole lot stronger than uh, this all thread conduit. So, yeah, let's tack these things together. Okay, so I laid this in this angle iron to hopefully keep it a little straighter. So I can weld it, uh, hopefully straight. But... Get to try out my new uh, titanium welding helmet. I ain't, ain't got to use yet, so let's give this thing a shot. And hopefully this uh, ground will work, because I don't know if there's a, too much scale and rust in that to, to ground it or what. So we're going to try it, though. already bolted up let's see if we can straighten that back out and uh, not tack it so big so yeah might have to grind that off so here's take two I ground that weld off of there it was just uh, I guess it was too hot too big so let's try to get a little smaller tack on it this time I believe that's good enough. I mean, it's got to be better than that off thread, right? So let's tack this one together. See how it does.
That one seems a little crooked. Whoops. Have to ground that one off too. Hopefully it stays a little straighter this time. Okay, I'm gonna say that's good enough on those. Probably a little crooked, but oh well. Probably end up bending it anyway. So let's uh, sand that off and see if we can't get it knocked into this spacer. There we go. And you can see those beautiful welds. Perfect. I almost forgot. And that's a joke, by the way. But I almost forgot. I'm going to drill a couple of holes in these to uh, put some tacks in. So let's drill these. So I'm just kind of guessing at where to put these holes. You know, maybe half or three quarters of an inch in from the end. And, uh, they will do a set in the middle here. That's probably close. there's what we got let's uh, drill the holes in this one now all right so I got all my holes drilled deburred them cleaned up the inside so hopefully there's nothing that'll snag the axles when I drive them through but I'm gonna have to um, put them together on the jack so I'll put this in the jack frame and slide the axle through which probably won't be that simple but Okay, maybe it will. So that's not too bad. So let's um, let's get one put together. I'll tack these in, and uh, well, first I'll put it in, center the axle up, tack it, and should be done. Other than uh, eventually throw a little bit of paint on it, but let's try and get these together. So the axle fits good, or the spacer fits good. Oh yeah. 
just a little bit of persuasion that that should be good look at that now that's excellent I'm going to say that's close enough. We'll tack that up and uh, throw some wheels on it. Test it out. Should hold together pretty good. Kind of see my tacks there. So we'll let that cool while that's cool, and we'll uh, bring the Pittsburgh in here and swap it out. We'll do that too. So the Pittsburgh Bald Eagle Pro. Um, I didn't epoxy the front axle on it and um, should be a little bit easier to take apart so let's get the uh, axle nut loose I might have to get a screwdriver on it because the way I done the axle I cut a groove in the end of it for a screwdriver so I could take it apart so let me grab a screwdriver There we go. So I actually like the look of these these wheels here on this jack. Um, these come from came from Harbor Freight as well, but that blue color on the the blue jack I think just looks really good. And so far these have held up pretty good. I've used them in the gravel quite a bit. Um, you know, I had some people saying that these would fall apart, but so far they're hanging together. If they ever do, I think I might just buy another set. They've uh, been really well so far. Now I got my welded up axle and my new spacer to go in here. Huh. We might have to drill these uh, <laughs> holes out here. Is this gonna fit this? No. Uh-oh. We run into a snag on this one. So, I remember it now is if you look at the axle here I don't know if it'll show up on camera but I just hit it with the sander just enough to get the wheel to fit in there so probably I'll have to do a bunch of sanding on this axle to get it to fit I don't know I don't know what's the best option here so if I just sand where the wheels go maybe and then drill this hole out to a half inch so the axle fits in the hole but gives space for the wheel I don't know I don't know what's best because I don't want to grind this down too much and the spacer be loose on it 
and we'll kind of run into the same problems we've had. So here you can see, it's not too loose, but see a little bit of wiggle there. Hmm, let's think about this. Okay, so what I've came up with, I mean, I don't know if it's the best option or not, but I'm gonna measure um, five inches out of the middle here and not grind it. So I'll grind from here out, basically, so it'll fit through the wheels and that will leave the strength in the middle. But I'll also have to drill out these holes to a true half inch to match the axle. So yeah, let's, let's measure and mark this and uh, get to sanding. There's the middle, if you couldn't see that already. So now we'll measure, say two and a half inches from either side, that'll give us five inches total, because this is four and a half, and then we got a quarter inch thickness on each end of the aluminum. So one, two and a half, one, two, and a half so that should be five inches so now let's uh, let's mark this where I can see it a little better all the way around there we go now we'll have to sand this much on the end here down until it fits in the wheel. So let's get to sanding. All right, so took a few minutes, <clears throat> burnt my hand a few times, but that's sanded down enough to fit in the wheels. So we left the the middle uh, diameter just a little bit bigger. You can't hardly tell on here, but it is bigger. So we'll drill the holes in the jack next. So my step bit won't go all the way through, but we'll drill what we can with it and then finish off the rest with the regular drill bit. Oh, we get a little nice taper on the edge of it. There we go. Now we'll just uh, run a regular half inch bit through there and finish the rest up. There we go. Look at that. So that's pretty close. Let's measure this and uh, uh, tack it up. That should be should be close. Good enough for me. So let's um, put some little spot welds in there and this one will be done too.
me. That looks good. Let's uh, slap these wheels on these things and test them out. Okay, so welded up. Got all my pieces here, so we'll throw these back together. These are the wheels that I got from uh, uh, Service Caster, I think was the name of the company. They was uh, really good to deal with. I think these bolts are going to be a little bit longer um, than the other ones because uh, I didn't actually cut them off to measure I just chopped the heads off of them I think it's a little bit longer so um, let's see yeah that ain't too hot so we can stick this one back together too this one's going to be a lot longer probably should have measured this axle because uh, these wheels are narrower hmm. there's something else to do well this one's turned into more work and it's not too long it's just they'll need to cut off a little bit yeah all right let's um, get these tightened up so I can put a pipe wrench on this, uh, put a wrench on this side either way um, to tighten these up, but I believe I'm going to use the pipe wrench that way I can torque each nut individual and make sure it's as tight as I want it. I know I said pipe wrench, but the vice grips are closer, so we're going to use those. So you can see how much that sticks out maybe maybe a quarter inch the back um, sticks out about an eighth of an inch so not too worried about that one this one will be the one that um, sticks out a little farther so let's tighten it up and see where where it ends up at Now this one probably needed to grind a little more on the axle but i believe we can push it on there yeah there we go now i believe they're ready to test out so Take them out here and maybe try them out on the load star or something or something kind of heavy. Okay, so we're under the load star. Uh, I hope you can see the axle pretty good on the front of this thing. Um, I'm gonna try to jack it up, just one wheel, of course, but um, we'll see if that uh, front axle bolts. We'll we'll check that together. So she's off the ground and <laughs> looks good to me so i'd say that's a win so everybody that told me that to do it that way uh thanks yeah that works good so now let's try the the daytona out okay so here's the daytona i expect it to be about the same so let's give it a try
But yeah, there we go. Looks good. Don't see no bend in it. What more could you ask for? Let's uh, let's try the Badland out just for fun. So here's the three-ton Badland off-road jack. Let's uh, let's jack the truck up with it. Well, don't see no flex in it, but I ain't gonna say the little jacks did better, but it seemed like it was less pumps on those. But yeah, that's a good jack. I'm glad to have it. But I'll probably end up using my little bitty jacks uh, more, so yeah. All right, so finally got these little jacks to what I would consider pretty much done. I still might cut the axle off, but it ain't hurting nothing right now. But as far as comparing these, I mean, obviously this uh, Badland is a lot bigger and heavier duty, but I don't know, I might need oil or something. It seems like it don't pump as good as these here, um, which I haven't added oil to them. It's just the way they came, but that one might need some, and then... I got, I might post a video of this thing. I'd seen a guy on TikTok. He had done uh, one something like this, used those big wheels. I had to add oil to that jack, but we actually drag it around and use it quite a bit too. So yeah, these uh, big wheels ain't just for looks. I know a lot of people think it's probably a waste, but <clears throat> it really does a lot better on the gravel and don't seem to sink up as bad but i mean that's kind of a wash because once it does sink up once the frame touches it's kind of kind of the same but i've noticed uh initially it's like they seem to do a little better maybe but anyway yeah this um badland has a full skid plate on the bottom so that would help a lot too if it was sinking up in the ground uh, which would probably come in handy around here with all this junk but yeah glad to have those done and uh put back together so eventually one of these one of these little ones might ride in my truck all the time whenever I get me uh a toolbox I'm trying to find a fuel tank toolbox combo but uh ain't having much luck everybody wants an arm and a leg when they do got one but yeah my intention was to get the bad land and keep in the truck but it's just it's actually too big it's just a big old big old floor jack um might end up putting a, a bottle jack or something you know get one of the what are they 10 12 ton one at harbor freight put in the truck but it's uh just so easy and convenient to drag one of these little ones around well anyway i'll quit uh quit rambling on here and uh win this video but yeah there they are all together good to go Glad I have them done, so let's uh let's get on something else.